Okay. Um, really sorry about the difficulty we were having earlier. Um, computer is still slow. So I wanted to record this video uh, just in case if I connect it back. Um, um, so I'm gonna make up for the rest of the class in this recording. I'm going to up, uh, combine it with the earlier recording. So as I was trying to show before I got cut off was a uh, actual demonstration of when you have a mass oscillating up and down, up and down. And you're able to, uh, if you make it paint up and down, up and down, and you paint on a piece of paper, and you're dragging the paint, you're dragging the paint, uh, you're able to see the same harmonic oscillation uh, of the uh, of the position time graph. Let's let's see this. So what is this dragging paper doing? This dragging the paper is really uh, making a, a time, um, because your position time graph, you cannot draw over time what's going on because you're only drawing, it's always repeating itself on the same location. So uh, dragging the paper is like giving a time frame, giving a time axis, you're able to show the position over time. I thought this is really cool in showing uh, exactly demonstrating uh, the position of the uh, simple harmonic oscillator on paper. So just a second, let's get back to the rest of our class. Here we have a mass hanging from a vertical spring. Okay, at a time equal zero, the distance is d. So it's going to also like up and down, up and down as a function of time. So which one of these uh, correctly describe the um, velocity time or acceleration time graph? So let's see, what do we do? So we probably wanted to start out with the position time graph, y versus t, right? And uh, we know that, well, we just need, we know it's sine pseudo, we need a cosine function, and we also need to make it work so it match up with the initial conditions. So what is the initial conditions? Initially, at t equals zero, y is at d, is a maximum value. So you know that if I write d cosine omega t, that should correctly describe the position time graph. Because you plug in t equals zero, you can see y is equal to d, right? Okay, so given the y, to do the velocity is dy dt. So taking the derivative with respect to time. So it's negative omega d sine omega t, right? And then to get the acceleration, you do dv dt. And you take another derivative, derivative you get negative omega squared d cosine omega t. So you can see that it is correctly described by this expression and this expression, where the v maximum value is omega d here, and the a maximum value is omega squared d there. Right, so a is the correct answer. Okay. So that's the process we just went through. Now, just one more checkpoint question for today's class. This one you have already done. You're looking at two cases showing the mass of the spring in these two cases are identical, but the difference is the amplitude uh, of the simple harmonic motion is twice as big in case two. So for case two, you drag it twice as much further back and let go. For case one, you only drag half of what you have for case two. 
Okay, so that's the two differences. And how are the maximum velocity in the two cases related? Well, you know that if you were to write the position for case one and the position for case two, you would say position in case one is the amplitude, let's call this, uh, it's negative one. So the distance d is one, the amplitude is one. So we do, uh, if it's the d cosine omega t, then d is one, right? And um, we do the negative sign because at t equals zero is at negative one. So this is negative cosine omega t. The y in case two is twice as much. So it's negative two cosine of omega t. Now they have the same frequency. Why is that? Because frequency is square root of k over m. They have the same mass, the same strength. So they have the same frequency. The difference is the amplitude. Okay, so now all about the maximum velocities. Now to get the velocity for, for one is v in case y is dy over dt, which is negative. So you take the derivative with respect to cosine, you get another negative. So it's omega sine omega t. And for velocity in case two, you take another derivative. So two omega sine omega t. So the maximum value for velocity is omega. The maximum value here for velocity is two omega. Right, so V max in case two is twice as much of velocity in case one. So D is correct, okay? All right, so that's all. Sorry, really sorry about the technical difficulties we were having previously, uh, but luckily we were just these two questions short of today's content. Um, just again, the final exam is going to be on Tuesday, May 18th. Make sure you have, give yourself some time to do the practice exam before I upload the solution later today, okay? All right, so that's all for today. Uh, I will combine this video with the previous class video to all be uploaded on Blackboard. I'll see you guys on Thursday, bye-bye.